Ooh, those heat spikes at the nail salon. Let me show you a few tricks on how to avoid those and a couple of other things about gel lights. So if you're a nail technician, one thing that's often overlooked, and I get it, it makes sense, is sometimes, well, almost all the time, there is a film on top of the bottom layer. Sometimes it's tinted blue, so it's easier to see, but don't forget to peel that off. <laughs> it's easy to miss. So sometimes when you go to the nail salon and you get your gel nails done, hybrid gel, any gel product, sometimes you can have a heat spike, also known as an exothermic reaction. It hurts. It's a real small point of heat that just spikes when your nails are in there and it hurts. It really hurts. It just doesn't hurt a little bit. Caraman doesn't know he's never had that happen to him, but it hurts and it's not comfortable. Here's a way to avoid it. There's two ways actually. The machine that the nail technician is using, the lamp may have a 90 second button. So they turn it on. Most of the big lamps will have a very big display so you can see the countdown. Both nail technician and the customer can see it. There's an on button. Turn it on. It displays and there's 30 seconds. 60 seconds, that's commonly what we use. But then there's a special little one, 90 seconds. That is not a strong light for a longer duration to make sure we do that cure. If they have that, you can use that. And that'll slow it down, still giving you the full cure, but slow it down so the heat spike isn't so intense. If they don't have that 90 second button, this is what you can do. Turn it on, they may not even know this, so you could show them. You want, they turn it on to 60 because they want a full cure. Hold your hand outside the lamp and slowly sneak it in. And I'm talking slow. They may see you're doing this and wonder what you're doing if they don't know this trick. What you're doing is doing the same thing that the 90 second button does is you're slowing the cure down and avoiding the heat spike. This is very effective. I have thinner nail beds, I always have. And I find this extremely effective when I'm using a thicker gel, like a builder gel. It doesn't happen with gel polish, but with builder gels it does. If you slowly creep in like that, and then by the time you get to your destination, and then rest for the duration, you're not going to have any heat spikes. The only thing you're going to want to do is you're going to add the few seconds that you missed. So if it was a 30 second time that you crept in, add 30 seconds to that cure time and you're cured. So another really important thing to know is where your fingers are placed. I mean, we don't know what's going on in there when your fingers are in there. We try to make sure they're going in the right spot, but here's a tip for you too. Often, they are built in with a little bit of a ridge. You basically wanna be in the center of it because where the lights are hitting it and the distance is all in the cure. That's the proper cure. So if you place your hands here, it's not going to be in the prime area for your lights to be getting to the gel. But if you place it in this ridge here, which is what it's telling you, sometimes it'll have indents, like these are the thumb indents. Sometimes it'll have individual little finger indents, but you want to place your fingers right about there. So the light, when it's on top, is hitting you in the spot that you need to, to cure that gel completely. And we get back to those little thumb spots. Obviously, when you're using the opposite hand, this little thumb spot is for there. And then when you turn it and you're using this hand, this little thumb spot is for there. So if you can feel those little ridges and stick your thumb in it, that's a great place to be. Now, good lights will have, and I'll turn this off so we're not looking at it. You don't actually want to look at the lights directly. That's not a good idea. But when you flip it over, you can see that they're going to have lights on the side of the machine to get that thumb when it's turned on the side. Okay, which is a different trick for the little lights. When you got your little lights here, what you wanna do is these lights specifically are designed just for one, two, three, or four fingers. You can just simply put your little fingers right in there like that. It's not meant for the thumb, so don't be putting your thumb in there. When we do the thumb for these, you wanna pick it up just a little bit and put your thumb in there directly in the center of the light. What I do, if I'm doing all four fingers, you can do both sets of fingers. And then when it comes to the thumb, you put your light on and then you get your thumbs lifted up and then you can sit your thumbs and cure them together at the same time like that. You just want your thumbs to be facing toward the light because in these little machines, see, you can see all the lights on the top. That's meant for a top cure. There are no lights on the side for those thumbs. So the thumbs have got to go upright. 
So these are great little tips if you're a nail technician or even if you're a customer. If you're a customer, you can share these tips with your nail technician because not every nail technician knows everything. We're all still learning as we go. So if you share this with your nail technician, they'll just be all the more wiser to be able to help you for a complete cure. If you're having any wrinkling, it might be time to look at a new lamp or try to revisit your application a little bit thinner, but definitely revisit the light. It might be just burning out and you just need to buy a new light. Thanks for joining me. I hope that helps.